Hello, uh, my name is uh, Vladimir Nikulin and uh, I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Um, and I specialize in uh, laser applications. Uh, the primary focus of my research is uh, laser communications, uh, which could be uh, thought of as the next closest thing to fiber optics, but uh, uh, I mostly do my work in free space laser communications where uh, fiber cannot be used. And, uh, there are certain types of applications where this could be required, such as uh, communication link between uh, platforms that keep moving or uh, let's say deep space missions uh, over very long distances. And uh, a couple of advantages that uh, people usually mention uh, when they compare uh, laser communications to conventional uh, RF based systems. Um, well, first of all, uh, the beams that are used to transmit the information, the laser beams, they don't diverge a lot. Uh, therefore, you can uh, use less power. And uh, at the same time, it's a lot harder to intercept a signal like this, which makes the uh, link a lot more secure. And uh, on the other hand, the uh, lasers, uh, the uh, fundamentally could be modulated much faster than RF uh, frequencies. Uh, therefore, you can uh, send the information at uh, considerably high bit rate, uh, which is uh, potentially uh, several orders of magnitude higher than what the RF channels could be. Um, well, uh, some of the work um, uh, that I do in this field is uh, related to controls uh, because we have to implement points and acquisition and tracking systems that uh, basically, uh, well, uh, keep the receiver pointed to the transmitter and vice versa uh, during the entire motion as uh, let's say an aircraft flies at supersonic speed while performing uh, complex maneuvers. And uh, uh, we have to address some other problems like atmospheric turbulence and such. Uh, so there are a few different uh, things that have to be done to make this work. And uh, this is a fairly new technology, so there are a lot, uh, a lot of commercial applications yet. Uh, and uh, what we do is, as I mentioned, uh, design control systems. Uh, uh, we use adaptive optics for certain tasks, and um, of course there's a communications uh, aspect and some signal processing, uh, so that's uh, actually a lot of different tasks that have to be integrated at some point. Uh, another form of communication uh, for which we use lasers is quantum communications, uh, which is uh, similar to conventional laser com, but uh, it adds uh, another layer of security uh, which is built right into the signal uh, on the physical layer. So uh, the information could be encrypted. Uh, so basically we're talking about a message that is being sent uh, while encrypted, but uh, it's not done through the mathematical complexity like uh, some of the crypto methods suggest, but uh, by uh, physically affecting the signal that was sent out. Uh, there are also a few other directions uh, in which we do research in this lab. and um, uh, I mentioned uh, some of the things like adaptive optics and uh, control systems. And they're uh, used, for example, in uh, applications like uh, remote sensing, uh, because uh, some, some of the components could be used in uh, laters and uh, laser scanners uh, and such. And uh, we do some work with uh, remote sensors and uh, some sensors that could actually uh, measure uh, uh, signals that are uh, in the, well, near the session themselves. Uh, 